this is pretty freaking awesome to be back in person. So wasn't quite sure what to expect on turnout. Turned out pretty dang good, I think. There was um, a month or two there when we kind of got back together in about the fallish time frame, I think. And uh, I think there was like two or three people at each one of those. So obviously not the right time. Um, but this feels pretty good. So thanks for coming out. Um, I'm sure for a lot of you, this is just as exciting for me uh, being, being back. So um, shortly too before uh, the world went and upended, uh, we were changing the format in here and introducing multiple um, presentations. And so if this is your first time joining in the past year, or even if you weren't at the kind of few before that, uh, the format's just a little bit different. Um, online, we've been trying to replicate what we were doing in real life, um, and, and now we're back with a slightly different tweak on things, and so it just, you know, if it, if it doesn't go swimmingly tonight, you know, we're working on it. So, any first-timers here? Uh, in, in person or online, yeah, first time in general. Cool, yeah, welcome. Um, wow, this is, this is so exciting. Um, so typically the format is I'll hop up here and talk about things going on in the community, other events. Obviously there's not a whole heck of a lot, um, so I don't have anything necessarily to talk about. However, if there are things, I know we've got, you know, the OpenSGF group, a couple other things. Um, if there's any events going on that you would like anybody to know about, please raise your hand right now and you can have the floor for a moment to, to chat. I don't have an event, but I have like an idea. Since there's so many new people, could we do like a... 10 second, like everyone just says their name and like something about them? Yeah, yeah. I know some people hate that, some people love it. So, <laughs> so I'll start. Uh, my name's Mike Bates. Hi, this is actually a good idea. Yeah, so we got some new folks in here. Good idea. Um, so I'm the president of uh, Springfield Devs. This group was started about uh, seven or eight years ago, it feels like now. I'm pretty sure it's around there. And about a year and a half ago, um, we decided to turn this into a formal uh, nonprofit entity um, to just get a lot more structure behind it. We wanted to do bigger events. Um, so if anybody went to the Method Conference, that legitimately happened like March 5th, I think was the date. And then it was the week after that, things changed drastically. So we got by the skin of our teeth on, on that one. And then we've been doing online since. Anyways, um, that's my long 10 seconds. We just want to start with Tiffany and start going around. <laughs> Hey, I'm Tiffany Ford. I'm the department chair for computer information science at OTC and helping run all of your streaming things. So I'm sorry about all the tech, uh, but we're making it work. Mike <laughs> yeah. uh, Ford, I'm a developer at uh, Code Snackers. Shannon Treadway, I'm learning, new, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> uh, Levi Zitting, developer at uh, Hero Technologies. Miranda Provance, Director of Engineering at Mostly Serious, and I co-founded a nonprofit called the Geek Foundation that is teaching people how to code and teaching people IT for free. Good program. Um, my name's Fred. Um, I'm just a developer. <laughs> <laughs> so my name's Daniel. I work for a tech company in New York, so I produce things. And I have some leftover swag. We're all about the swag. <laughs> Mark Shipley, uh, MSC Square New South Wales web developer. I'm Ben Ellis, I'm a software engineer and one of the owners at Element 11, which is a small web design and development company in Mixup. Um, I'm Kent, I'm a recent graduate from OTC and uh, I work with Element 11 and here's my boss right here. <laughs> uh, my name is Kuo, uh, I work at the city of Springfield in the information system department. My work title is too long that I can't. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm vaccinated. Oh, are we supposed to be? Yeah, we're <laughs> vaccinated. Yeah. I'm Ben Pomeriki, a uh, software developer uh, for Worldwide Technology. Uh, our closed office, our nice uh, storage units are right down, right down the road. Storage units, yes. Well, I'm Andrew. Uh, Uh, I work for Wilkes Creek National Battlefield. I do IT support for them. Awesome. Uh, 
I'm Gil, uh, I'm an OTC student, uh, so I'm a computer science student at the OTC. And I'm really excited to come here. <laughs> yes. I'm Jeff, I'm also a student at OTC. I'm Jesse Gilmore, first semester in computer science at OTC Utah. OTC represent. Ooh. Ooh. Yes. <laughs> Awesome. Yeah, that was a great idea. Thanks. Thanks. They've been they've been aching for that extra credit for like. <laughs> <laughs> extra credit days are back. <laughs> yeah, especially right before the end, right? Yeah. Awesome. Any other happenings? Yeah. So uh, I'm Levi Zidane again. Me and Fred are co-captains of the OpenFGF group. We're um, working with nonprofits to help them, you know, build software to help move their their uh, project along. Um, and we meet every Monday, now we're doing in person, here at the E-Factory at 6 p.m. So if you uh, want to put some hacking skills to good use, help out some nonprofits, meet us there and we'll, uh, we'll find something for you to do. Thank you. It's embarrassing. Yes. Absolutely. Beginners, anyone who's interested. Okay. I'll, I'll pass the word along. Thank you. Anyone who's done that? Yes. Um, so... So we have, where's the presenter for AWS in here? He's, he's hanging out in there, okay. Uh, that's, that's all good. Um, so then the next thing we typically do here is just talk about the presentations for tonight. So we have two, um, I would say. From the audio? In Georgia, a Yeah, but. Is there like a video playing somewhere? <laughs> you have a tab open? I don't know where that's coming from. I just muted my audio. <laughs> I don't know where that's coming from. Is it, is it his presentation somehow coming through our speaker? Interesting. It's going to get real interesting real quick tonight. Um, okay, so the next thing we would do is kind of have everyone talk about their presentation. Um, other presenters in there. Um, I'll talk about mine real quick. So tonight, um, I'm going to be doing a pretty high-level overview of doing augmented reality development uh, with iOS and Swift. I will like pre-warn you. I I've been doing this for like two weeks, and so like I'm certainly no pro, um, but I've got enough tangible pieces that I think you you know if you're interested in it, you'll probably find it pretty inspiring um, and and really want to kind of dig in yourself. So. The goal is not necessarily for you to walk out here of an AR pro, but just kind of enough to, to get your appetite wet. Um, the AWS is going over how to get all like 12 certifications in a, in a day or something like that. 12 certifications. Oh, I got it up there. Yeah. 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 I don't know that that's recommended, but he's going to tell you how to do it. Yes. And, and my bad is not Jason uh, presenting it. So. If that entices you anymore to, to yeah, see. <laughs> 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 Jason, I love you. It was a, it was a friendly joke. Yeah. Uh, um, so in a moment here, when we when we break out, uh, head over to the BKD room, which is just around the corner yonder by the uh, blue bear that you'll see out there. So um, if there's no other kind of community announcements, uh, the only other things I had to add in were if you have not been to our site yet. This thing has been a long time in the making and it's it's finally mostly launched. Um, it's sgf.dev is the URL. Uh, the big thing that we're trying to push for right now is getting people signed up in here for the directory. No cost or anything like that. Uh, but the idea is to build out a directory of developers in the community. So you'll be able to set your profile picture, uh, your skill sets is really the big thing in there. And then the opportunity to state if you are available for contract work, uh, full-time hire, stuff like that. Um, with the hopes that fellow developers in the community, if they're looking for people to uh, work with, this as a go-to resource, and obviously employers, uh, we really hope to start getting engaged um, pretty, pretty seriously here as well. Um, making that hopefully job match situation you know, that much more fruitful, having some really uh, qualified leads in here um, and, and good companies in there um, scratching each other's back, everyone. So um, sgf.dev, the site is launched, um, but that's not to say it's without bugs. 
Um, and we're, we're working on that. So I think there's one bug in there right now. David can't uh, display his, uh, or he can't change his profile image. <laughs> <laughs> so he's Pipey, the Pied Piper Piper. Uh, so, um, anywho, uh, working on getting this loaded up. The, we also, if you're interested in helping develop this, for a while there, there was so much work to do that it was really intangible for anybody to kind of hop in and, and like help out with something quick just because it was just so much. Now that it's launched, we're really narrowing down um, the, the to-do items. Uh, so there's a lot more bite-sized pieces to help with. And one of the biggest pieces that, that sucked on it is, uh, we, I love the CMS it's built on. It's Umbraco, if anybody's familiar with it. It's a .NET CMS. Uh, sorry if that... .NET sends any shivers down your spine, um, but uh, one of the things that sucked is they've been working on the .NET Core version, um, but when we went to go build this, it wasn't nearly ready to, to build on. Uh, they released their beta version of that about a week ago, and I've got this site almost all but running in the .NET Core version, so here very shortly, you can now work on Mac, Linux, or Windows to develop on this, whereas previously it was just Windows, so that kind of like just knocked a bunch of people out from, from helping on it right off the bat. So that will change here pretty quick. Um, anyways, if you create a profile, that would be super helpful. The Discord, uh, if you go on the sgf.dev Discord link down in the bottom, Fred had a really good input to make that a heck of a lot more present. We'll put it up in the main nav here pretty quick. Um, but join in there. There's a channel where you can submit any ideas, bugs, or whatever, right? Like, we, we just want feedback on this. So if you did that, that would be freaking awesome. Um, otherwise, I think that's about it. We'll be back in person next month. Topics aren't lined out yet, but as we kind of settle back into this normal routine uh, quickly, a lot more presentations will get slated out for many months in advance. And looking forward to bringing a lot more sturdiness, you know, back back to everything. And we will continue doing online. So whether you know coming in person wasn't for you tonight, um, or if you you've got stuff going on. We will be presenting online um, in addition to in person, like from here on out. So, there's that. Um, so, anyways, with that said, we'll go ahead and take five minutes here to transfer. Um, so, A R I O S in here, A W S yonder. We work on a video chat application, so a lot of times. I think so. That's the slide. Wait, mute that. I assume everyone can hear me now. Probably so. Yeah. You're like, oh, really? Yeah, see, now you're lighting up. There we go. Lighting up. Uh, hey, everyone missed the intro, so will everyone be. Okay. Okay. I'm here live, Judge. I'm not a cat. Streaming since the start? Okay, cool. Uh, yeah, right, right, right. As your audio is coming there, because you didn't come up here, it was just the, your mic was so low, I don't think it was picking up. Yeah, it was basically muted, yeah. <laughs>
All right, well, we'll go ahead and uh, kick this off. I tend to be slightly long-winded, so, um, yeah. Um, I always hate starting off with these obligatory type things, but I'm just curious, trying to get a pulse on the room. Has anybody done augmented reality development? A little bit? At, at, at the Magic Conference? We had a speaker. Oh. Oh, yeah. Facebook AR stuff? Oh, yeah, okay, okay, yep. Awesome. It was awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Anyone else? Uh, like a whole other lifetime ago. Cool. All right. Um, does everyone in here have? Does anybody not have an iPhone? All right. <laughs> we're still we're still interested enough though to, to check stuff. Okay. Fair enough. All right. We got like half the because like the half they gravitated towards each other too. Like, <laughs> we forgot where all the Apple people gravitate towards each other. But yeah. They. <laughs> um, all right, so let me just give a little bit of background with, with my experience in AR and, and the reason I was super interested in doing this presentation tonight. Um, I've, I've, done a, I've got a few apps under my belt in the AR realm. Uh, they were pretty similar in nature where they use, first of all, they were meant for like a bit more advertising type purposes. And they used a mark. So a physical, like uh, one was a coaster, for example. I think both of them were coasters, two of the main ones I'm thinking about. Uh, the success of the first one led to the, you know, a similar second one. Um, so the idea being that if you had the app, right, the first one I did was uh, um, for an agency uh, that I worked with, a media project here in town. Um, we did a coaster for a food company um, who did fried foods and uh, wanted to have like a beer pairing component with this. And so at the bars where they had these coasters, if you downloaded the app, or if you're at a you know, food trade show, whatever, um, you can scan this thing and it like opens up this whole experience of swiping through all these pairing, um, you know, beer pairings that, that pair with fries and, and such, whatever. Um, and then I did uh, another one for my company, Hero, uh, what we wanted to do, we were also at a trade show and wanted the ability for people to learn more about what it is that our product did. And so, again, this was like an after party type thing, so there were drinks flying again. Oh, okay. Oh, there we go. <laughs> you on that? <laughs> um, and so we did another coaster type thing where if you scanned this, uh, you'd kind of get like this, you'd see our product, you know, kind of come into view and it would play these videos, these really epic videos. and and basically explain our product uh, to you. And the other cool thing about that was you could kind of, our product goes inside of homes. Um, and you could kind of visualize what it would look like, you know, on, on a surface and show it to, you know, the users that would be using that in the home. So there's a lot of, you know, practical purposes. There's a lot of silly purposes uh, to, to AR and, uh, and uh, VR. But I would argue that augmented reality has probably a bit more practical purpose in like the business realm uh, with training, advertising, I mean the, the, the list is endless, uh, but it's also just fun to play around with as well. And so that's kind of what we're going to be focused on tonight, is a bit more of the intro level stuff and, and just cool stuff to kind of get the gears turning up here, right? Um, why I'm doing Swift and ARKit and, and iOS is because previously my, my other, you know, goes at AR were done with a um, platform called Unity. Uh, you, some of you may be familiar with that. It's largely a gaming engine, um, but it also made it really easy to do augmented reality stuff. Um, and so while you could do some really powerful things in there, it always felt a little bit like, I don't really know what the hell's going on here. Like I made it work and did cool stuff with it. But like I, I didn't truly know what was going on, and I don't necessarily find myself at like the place of knowing exactly what's going on now. But I was always a little bit intimidated of going into like a platform-specific AR tool uh, because it just felt like uh, the training wheels would be off, and and like it would be so much harder. Um, but have had uh, some interesting needs come up where I wanted to lean into uh, some of the camera functionalities that are on some of these newer i um, devices. Uh, that LiDAR sensor in there can, can accomplish some really cool things. Um, so decided to kind of lean into it, test it out, and found that 
generally speaking, it was not as scary as I thought. Um, it ended up being, you know, like not that this is easy and not that this is going to be a cakewalk what we're going to see tonight. Um, but I think you might be a little surprised to see like, you know, relatively few lines of code accomplish some pretty cool stuff. So um, that's the whole kind of setup for this. Obviously, like I put in Meetup and also kind of uh, alluded to earlier that um, this is just iOS. Android certainly has a counterpart to this. Um, and then there are other frameworks out there that kind of remove the need to know about both of these ecosystems and you can write to one and it works on both. Um, and, and both have their pros and cons. And I don't even know what those are. I probably should for this presentation, but whatever. Um, so that's what we're gonna do tonight. I've got about three, maybe four projects. It's, it's gonna be a little wild. I ran through this once last night. And it was really long, but I think I've got an idea how to like really, really get at it and, and hone in. So it's going to be a lot of code typing. Um, if I feel that we're like kind of halfway through and running low on time, I'll probably start doing a lot of copy paste. But otherwise, like I've got to be typing a lot, and so it kind of gets awkward and silence sometimes. And typing is hard when you have people watching you too. So um, I might. Can we see the screen? Okay. Does anybody feel like dimming the lights would help any? Or are we good? Good. Okay. All right. We'll go for it then. Um, cool. Any questions before we start digging in? Because it will take me a second to kind of get set up here. Okay. So we're starting with a fresh project here. Um, create, create new. Um, another thing I have in here is a note that I missed. Um, if you if you go home and, and you start working on this and want to start doing some of this stuff, um, a couple of things you'll need is a Mac. Um, you'll need some sort of iPad or iPhone device, um, and the other thing you'll need is an Apple developer account. They are now free. Uh, you used to have to pay $100 a year to get access to them. They are free now, and Apple will charge you if you want to distribute your application. Uh, but you can run on your local device for free. So. Going to be a lot of things that I don't necessarily have the answers for. There's some terminology in here that I just don't totally get yet. There's a lot of 3D concepts on here that I just don't have any sort of like background in. Um, so just bear with me when I say like Euler angles. Yeah, we all know what those are. Um, those kind of things. Um, we're going to start from scratch here. So we'll call this um, SGF AR1. Um, and I know some of this is gonna be a little bit small. The code will be really zoomed in, but these kind of screens will, will be a bit small. A couple pieces, a couple different pieces of technology that we're gonna be working with. If you go and dig more into, into Apple's AR stuff, you're gonna find that you'll see a lot of AR kit and reality kit. And I'm like, well, what the hell is the difference between these things? Um, I don't fully know, but I have a, a decent understanding that uh, AR kit was kind of Apple's first iteration of what they were doing with augmented reality, and it still gets used even today. It's it's really the bones about figuring out your world. So when you're moving your phone around and recognizing, you know, planes and surfaces, AR Kit is, is kind of the main tool behind that. Um, and then there's some other tools like Sprite Kit, and Metal, and something else, Scene Kit, um, that you would use to basically place objects in that world. While AR Kit was the one that was really doing the heavy lifting of, of tracking your world. Um, reality Kit starts to starts to blur these lines a little bit more, but it's it's the evolution of the Sprite Kit, Metal, and uh, Scene Kit. So that 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 idea of placing objects in your world, Reality Kit is the kind of successor to that, and gives you a lot more bang for your buck, so to speak. So it becomes a lot easier to place. 3D models and other things inside of your world, Reality Kit starts to make this a lot easier. It's a lot newer, and I suspect in June when Apple has their new dev conference, there's probably going to be a lot of updates to Reality Kit. Right now it's slightly limiting, and we'll run into some of that here in just a little bit. So anyways, <laughs> let's get going. First thing we're going to start with is, um, is uh, real, what, Reality Kit, um, or Scene Kit, what? Sorry, yeah, Scene Kit I guess is the one we're going with. Hopefully, gosh, <laughs> yeah, seems about right. Um, language is gonna be Swift, our interface. Uh, again, there's gonna be a lot of stuff we're just gonna glance over. And the next project we do is actually going to use Swift UI, um, whereas uh, storyboards more use like a drag and droppy type interface, sort of. Um, so we're just gonna start with this. We're not even gonna mess with it, honestly. Uh, so we're just gonna create this project. 
to get out of the box. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is I know this is going to bark at me. It um, wants to build on a newer version of iOS. I'm going to take it down a notch because the iPad I'm running on isn't totally up to date. Uh, but otherwise, what we get out of here is uh, just a few files. Is it open? No? Working on it. Uh, we get this app delegate file, which is we're not even going to pay attention to it. It's in every project. kind of bootstraps up your project. Uh, but what we're going to be spending our time is, is right here in this view controller. And uh, we'll take notice down here, um, it's creating this new scene um, and uses these SC um, um, scene kit, scene nodes. We'll see a lot of this vernacular here. And the big thing here is that it's using uh, this file path for this art um, scene assets ship scene. Uh, so by default, uh, what you get out of here is actually this ship scene file. So they kind of just give you like a 3D model um, that's going to get placed in the world, and, and that's about it. So let's just run this and make sure everything's working fine. And got to do this number here. Working on running. Give me a lot of this. So, what this is going to do, first prompt me access to my camera, and then it's just going to place this thing in the world. So, when I started the app, it recognized like the middle of where I was, and just planted that thing right there. Um, and, and we can straight up, like, I mean, get down here and check out, check out this ship here. Um, so, kind of cool, right? I mean, you get that all out of the box. Nothing, nothing, nothing to mess around with, just kind of works. So. What we're going to do though, and I apologize if this gets slightly cumbersome because there will be moments that it does, um, we're going to just comment this out and start from a little bit of scratch here. So I've got the notes that I'm going to heavily refer to. Um, so first things first is we've got some like debug options that we can put in here. So I'm going to come down here and say, um, Scene view, um, debug options, equals, uh, what is it, um, feature points, show feature points. Um, what this is going to do, I won't run this every time, but I do, when I'm working locally, I like to kind of everything, like, let's see what this does, see what this does. I'm just going to explain some of these. So when we launch this, you're going to start to see all these yellow dots everywhere, and it's, that is it showing you, I figured out that there's stuff here figured out that there was a little piece of raised thing here and there's a cup and so it just starts showing you what it's seeing as just some nice feedback that, that it's working right um, and then we're also going to add in the scene view um, auto enable default lighting um, just to have uh, when you don't have this enabled like you just get flat light when you turn this on you actually when you start it it basically puts a light up here, and so, like a big light. So when you start moving around, you start seeing some shadows from this fictitious light up here. I mean, it's pretty interesting stuff. Um, and then we're going to just create a sphere in the world. So we're going to say, oh, my, my typing is going to be so bad. There it is, all right. Uh, we're going to create this draw spheres function. Um, and what this is going to do is straight up just draw this sphere in the world instead of that 3D like asset that we had, right? So um, you know what? Screw this. <laughs> I'm just going to start copy and paste a little bit. I'll, I'll kind of comb through some of this though. So give me one sec. Just, I haven't changed my mind. Time is running good. I'll start going back to typing some of this manually. Um, so we start looking at um, yeah, lots of fun troubleshooting too. Um, we start off with a uh, sphere that we're defining, and it's a it's a scene node. 
um, that is a geometry shape, and we can pass, start passing in these shapes here. So there's like spheres, planes, uh, these different 3D type objects in here, and then we give it a radius. I believe these numbers are typically measured in meters. Um, so it's just interesting that you take real world measurements and start applying them to these virtual things and it can just figure out how to start scaling these things in, in real life. Um, oh man, yeah, shoot, shouldn't have done this, huh? All right, sorry, jumped ahead of myself here. I'm gonna comment some of these out, <laughs> we'll come back to them. Uh, position, so okay, uh, what we're gonna do here is actually say sphere geometry, we're gonna get at some materials that are on there, and this is where some of like the 3D world just starts to escape me. Um, so this diffuse and specular and these different types of uh, materials that you can put on here. Um, I'm going to call this uh, blue. Uh, so we're basically going to give it a blue color. That is effectively what we're doing there. We'll come back to those couple of lines here in a second. Um, we're going to position it basically center of world. And that's what these, this scene vector um, is a X, Y, and Z coordinate. So for web developers in here, we're all, you know, we're 2D, like anybody, designer, whatever, we're all familiar with X, Y coordinates, right? Well, Z is that like forward and back, right? So now we're dealing with that third dimension. That's exactly what that is. And then what we're doing down here is adding um, this node that we've created here to our scene view. And then I'm gonna delete the rest of this. We'll come back here and manually type some of that stuff in. So up in kind of our, um, main line stuff up here. We're going to call this draw sphere. And oh, that doesn't count. Oh, did I miss it? Oh, there it is. Okay. <laughs> there's, there's, there's the blue sphere. Um, and you can see those yellow dots um, start picking things up in the world. And that's just a Levi. <laughs> Nice indication that it's picking things up. So there's our sphere, right? Yeah, we can walk around it. Cool. All right. Let's do some more fun stuff with it. So, got some of these things that I had commented out here. Let's actually, instead of making it blue, solid blue, let's give it some personality. Um, so let's go over here. And is it this page? Somewhere on the site. Yeah, let's make it kind of look like this, right? So let's zoom in a little bit just to get a bigger representation of this and just simply take a screenshot of it. It's an SVG, so like I could save the image, but I don't know if SG, SVGs will work in here very well. So just took a screenshot of this and I'm gonna come back to Xcode here. By the way, we're using Xcode. <laughs> Probably didn't mention that. Um, if you're doing anything Apple development-wise, you're gonna be using Xcode, likely. There's other things you can use. JetBrains has an awesome editor. editor. Shout out to JetBrains. Um, but when you're using these intimate tools uh, with Apple stuff, like you just, as junky as Xcode is sometimes, you just have to use it. Um, so I've got this screenshot right there. I'm gonna call it uh, devs and just drag and drop this over here as an image asset in my project. Uh, that's really all that's going on here. And anything that you put in this unique folder that uh, Apple has provided in here, like your code can be aware of it. You can reference this as basically like a, a folder that anywhere you have assets, it's gonna be there. You can create new ones too, but whatever. Um, so what we're going to do, I'm just gonna leave that down there. Uh, we're going to, instead of this UI color blue here, so instead of making that blue, we're gonna make that an image. And this is where uh, that name comes in, so we're gonna call it devs. Um, there's no like file format on here, you just reference what name it gave that thing as you dumped it in there, which is the image name without the format. Um, and let's just do this, let's just leave that as right now. And uh, come back over here, wait for it to build. And doing this stuff, you know, at your desk is always fun, you have to like really get it in a position because it's gonna hopefully like lock itself yep, right there, right? Um, so now we can walk around this thing and see how it applied that image to that stuff. Pretty powerful, right? I didn't really have to do anything to make to make this work, and it does cool stuff. And you can kind of see how it's got like those black 
edges on that, that's that lighting. So that's that light taking effect. And as you move around this thing, like that lighting will change. Um, if I didn't have that on there, it would just be flat, um, which is fine. Um, cool. Uh, I think we can we'll leave off the specular stuff in there. Uh, specular will also act as like another light, I believe. Uh, so you can kind of give it some shine to it, so you can add some colors. So like if you wanted to mimic a sun, for example, you can make it specular, like this yellow color, and get this yellow shine going on in there. Um, let's my notes. Um, so next thing I want to do is make this, we'll just call it, like it feels like a planet, it feels like a dense planet. Um, so I want this thing to rotate, right? Um, and what we can do here is set up an action. Uh, so I'm going to define this rotate action is a scene action, um, and there, let's see, scene action, yeah, so there's all sorts of like built-in kind of movements here, right, so uh, rotate uh, is one of them, and we're going to quickly do one little tip that I saw somebody talking about, and that's actually to create a nice little helper method to um, deal with some math stuff. So like when we're thinking about rotating, right, we kind of think like 90 degrees, 180, 360, like that's how we kind of think about rotation. Um, doing the math is just a little bit different in this. You need to uh, convert things to radians. I'm gonna pretend to understand like what, what that is. Um, so I found this nice a little extension method um, that you can make uh, where you can turn uh, and this is cool about Swift. Like, I know very little about Swift, but this is some cool stuff. So if you've got an integer, uh, then you can, like, run these, you chain these, like, methods on that, these extension methods. So if we've got an integer, uh, we're going to make this a uh, little function called uh, degrees to radians. Did I spell that right? Um, and it's going to return a float. And... in itself, um, and we're basically going to take that pi divided by 180. Uh, yep, great, looks good to me, moving on. Uh, so on this uh, rotate action now, we could have done you know some of that math in here, used, used kind of the, the right thing, um, but we're now going to rotate this in a moment. Um, we're going to rotate it. 360 degrees, and so 360 dot, and now I should see um, de degrees, no, degrees, that's not right. Because you added it to in, but the point zero makes it a float. Oh, degrees to radians, thanks Levi. Um, and then this around stuff starts to get a little, a little elusive. Basically, I think what we're doing is kind of keeping this thing in place and just saying rotate like this, as opposed to say like rotate around here, or keeping it in place. So we're gonna take this um, uh, scene vector, we'll use this you know, quite a bit here, um, and we're gonna say zero, one, zero. Um, again, I believe that's just kind of rotating in its place, and then you can give it a duration. So we're going to simply say um, eight seconds, and then when we have that, by default, um, if I were to take my scene view and like apply this um, rotation to it, it's just going to do it once. Um, and so you can actually set up a, a different type of action here. We'll call it uh, rotate forever. Scene action. And it's got this repeat forever. And then you pass in an action. So it's going to be our rotate action that we defined right above it. Um, and then we take our sphere and run action and pass in the rotate forever on there. So if we run this, hopefully, yep, freaking air out there disappeared. Xcode is pretty helpful sometimes, and then other times the air is just like, no way the heck out of you. Uh, but hopefully here now, once it learns itself, burp. And so now, now we've got that rotate vector in there. Oh, geez, yeah, my bad. That'll probably happen more than once. Um, so, rotating. Ta-da. <laughs> um, we're going to keep building on this, and that'll just sit there and rotate, rotate, rotate. Whatever. Um, we're going 
going to now bring that ship back in. So, punk, draw ship. So we can actually, prop, well, sorry, I'm reading the notes here. Oops, sorry. There we go. All right. Um, so when we started this thing, we had you know this stuff that we commented out that put that ship just in the world. So we're going to come and kind of rob that uh, back out of here and come down to our draw ship, and we'll just use that as a starting point here. Um, and what this scene file is doing is just a lot of the, so we wrote code to draw a sphere, right? And the scene file is effectively like you use a visual editor, you would drop in, you know, your 3D model into this thing and edit its materials and stuff like that in more of a visual sense. Um, so what we're doing here is grabbing um, that, that ship scene that already existed. Um, but what we're going to do, so that's grabbing the whole scene and really all we care about in that scene is that ship. Um, so by default, it applied this whole scene to there, right? We just want to take just that ship out of there because we've already got our own scene that we're dealing with, right? Uh, so we're just, you know, getting a little bit more low level here. So now that we've got our scene, we're basically going to uh, just grab that ship out of there. So we're going to say uh, scene dot root node child node. Um, so the name is ship, and I'll show you that here in a second. Um, and recursively, uh, I think that'll just kind of keep digging down to your scene uh, to find that. But if we were to go back to this ship scene, you, it'll probably be a little hard to see up here, but um, somewhere, where the heck was it? Um, click on it? Yeah. So if I, if I click on that ship um, up here, I know it's going to be super hard to see, uh, but you can see we went from like scene to ship. And so we see that in there. So that's its node name. So we're basically grabbing that thing just by its identifier. And if that were nested down, that recursive, like just digging down through there, would find probably the first one with ship and bring it back. So uh, we can set it or not, uh, but we know it's right there, so who cares? Uh, so we've got our ship now, and we're gonna kind of do some of the same stuff here. So we're gonna say uh, the position of that ship is our scene effector. And we're going to do something a little bit different here. When we placed it before, we said 0, 0, 0, right in that center. Um, we're going to change that just a hair, and we're going to say um, 1, 0, negative 0, 3. Um, and um, so 1 is going to push it back. Uh, sorry, negative 3. Is, 0 0.3 is going to push it back. And um, I believe that first one is our X and move it to the left, I think. Uh, we'll see the effects of it here in just a moment. Um, but the other thing we're going to do, it's really big. So you remember when we had that thing here, it was, it was pretty large. Um, so we can scale this down as well. So um, scale also takes uh, one of those vectors. Um, and so we're just going to scale it um, to 30% of its size. And um, we'll do, this is an interesting one. So we're going to, okay. Previously up here, um, I added our sphere to our speed, uh, speen, <laughs> to the scene. Um, so scene view dot scene root node, add child node. I added that sphere to our scene. The goal here is to get this ship to like rotate around this, around this devs planet, right? Um, and I could set up like its own animation to do that, but the other thing that I can do is just add it to the sphere and then that's where that position comes into play. So I'm, at, I'm going to add it to the sphere and its position now is going to be relative to what I'm adding it to. So instead of worrying about the world, I can put it in that sphere and then whatever I do with my sphere, like make it bigger and move it, the ship's just going to move with it as opposed to having to manage both of their locations. Um, so instead of doing a scene view um, dot add, um, I, yeah, I want to get at the sphere. Um, so I've got sphere to spot, defi, uh, defined in this draw sphere method. Uh, so what I'm going to do is actually just go up here. It's a C node. I think I can just do um, star sphere equals C 
scene. Code. What's that? Uh, yeah. That should do it. And hopefully this will clear up in a second. Yeah. There we go. Um, so now instead of just defining it locally here, I've got it scoped uh, so that kind of everything could have access to it now. Um, so I'm going to, now that I have access to it, I'm going to sphere, uh, add child node, and I'm going to add ship. Oh, pissed, pissed at something. Hang on. Uh, Not up to snuff on my unwrapping and forcing and, and all that stuff. <laughs> Swift, what are you going to do? Uh, so, I moved around else. And somewhere is my UX shell. Anywhere? Unreal. Well, this is going to be a fun troubleshooting sesh. Looking for it. Okay, no, all right, let's go, let's go figure out what's going on here. Um, okay. Ship scene. Uh, scene. Ship. Person calls. Position, scale, sphere. Oh, this is... Say that again? What are the units on the stack? Yeah, so they're, um, I don't want to tell you wrong, and I might be, so sorry, uh, but this is an X, Y, and Z coordinate, so if we... So are they like meters, feet? Yeah, so I think typically meters, um, and, and I say that, and I don't want to be wrong, um, it could be centimeters, <laughs> so just, just bear with me there. Um, yeah, I'm not sure why this isn't showing, actually. Oh. I know why. I'm an idiot. So I didn't call it. Uh, <laughs> yeah, this is fun, huh? Um, so sorry. I, I'm, I think it's meters. That's how I think of it in my head. But I'm also the <laughs> radius you said was in meters. Yes. Right. Oh. So. Oh. Here we go. There we go. Switch back with your screen. Uh, dang it. <laughs> Starting it over. Starting it over. Hang on. That will continue to happen. I'm just gonna. It's it's going. It's going backwards. Oh. Here we go. Yeah. So, it's going. Let's fix. Let's fix can that. You, can you switch the rotation? Yes. We're gonna do that right now. So what we're gonna do is not fix the rotation, but we're gonna rotate the ship, right? So um, so we're gonna keep it going this way, but we're gonna flip that ship around. So. So uh, how does it decide the origin of that? Uh, so, because I've added it to that sphere, it's using it as its point. And to your question, right, what was what were these doing down here? So, its position and scale are controlled here. So, I've told it basically to move itself back away from that planet a bit, and then over this way, I think. <laughs> no, but I mean, like, when, when you create that, that, uh, that sphere, mm -hmm. it was at the origin. And how does it decide the origin? where you start your um, device. So when I run it, it decides its origin, like basically, downgrade. where your device is. Yep. And so if you just hold it here, and then you step back, that's where you'll see it. So it basically centers itself in the screen, effectively, of your device. Okay. Yep. Awesome. And you can change that, right? Like, so I've got a dead center, zero, zero, zero. If you say, I want you over here, right? One, move it one meter that way, and that, that's what that will do. Um, so this is where these, I believe it's pronounced Euler, but it looks like it's spelled Euler. So if there's anybody who knows and can settle this for me. Euler. Euler, all right, yes. <laughs> uh, 
so these Euler angles. So we're basically going to flip that chip around. So that this the Euler angle, right, is going like this with it. Um, so this degrees to radians um, and R Z. I'll just put that there. And so yeah, its position you'll see is basically going to place itself here. Once you learn, right? Oh, there we go. Step back and uh, watch it spin around this way. Coming? Yeah. And like, it's crazy, right? You can just get under here and, what are you doing? <laughs> it's fun, I had a lot of fun in my office playing around with this. <laughs> so that's fun. Um, that's project one. <laughs> so, questions before we move on? Cool, right? I mean, like, yeah. cool seeing this. Um, project two, what we're gonna start with, how are we doing on time? Seven. So, all right, I'm going to kind of crank through this. So, project two, um, I had intended to get to a lot of stuff. And so, there's some elements that I'll probably skip over here and just copy and paste. Some of that's going to be some Swift UI. Um, so, if you were looking forward to seeing, like,
Check, check, check. Yeah, we good now. Okay. okay. There we go. Okay. We're back. <laughs> okay. Uh, Twitch stream, sorry. Uh, oh. Oh, uh, yeah, everyone dropped. Hey, Craig. Um, okay. Onward. So, first thing we're going to do is just create a little bit of menu bar uh, for us to work with because we're going to, what we're going to do here is a little bit more interactive. Uh, we're going to like press a button to place things, right? Don't know what that noise is. Um, so, we, whatever. Um, okay. Um, Swift UI, great, sorry. Ooh, lost me. Um, so, oops, oh man. Here we go. All right, so. First things first, I'm gonna take, I'm not gonna type any of this. I had originally planned on it, but youth. Content, yeah, okay. Um, let's just kill this for a moment. Paste this in here, and we're gonna comment some stuff out for sure. All right. So let's kill, there we go, okay, kill that, that, okay, and hopefully this will give us AR container, yeah, okay, well, let's just try this, see what we get. Uh, the hope here is that we get a little menu bar at the, at the bottom here with a couple of buttons. There's a menu bar with a couple of buttons <laughs> in the old box out there. Okay, cool. Um, just wanted that um, to, to just get a little bit more functionality out of here. Just a really quick run through on this. Um, this is Swift UI. It kind of looks similar to, to Flutter where we set up this stack of components in here and what we've put here is that AR container. So that's how the AR world still comes into play. Um, and then we are then adding some space in there, which uh, weird whenever I'm mean, truly know that works. And then a um, horizontal stack. Um, so this is our two buttons. So we basically create this bucket for these buttons um, to live in. And this is where some of the syntax gets a little weird for me. So like this button, my thing doesn't seem to be highlighting very super well, but um, so this button, I want an image in it. And so you define your button with an action, which we're not doing anything on yet. And then we set this image like this. It just looks weird to me. I don't really get it. Um, and then we frame that up and give it some, some dimensions in there. 50 by 50, and then we add another spacer. The spacer is kind of a magic thing. It basically pushes as much space as possible between things. Um, and if you remember, my button container was about yay, while my screen was about yay. Um, and so down here, if we look a little bit further, my frame of this whole thing, I've set to 150. So it's got a max width of 150, and that's why it didn't you know, push that space out all the way to the screen. Um, and then another interesting piece that I found interesting was uh, you can use um, this image um, node in here, if you will, this image element, and set it to a font uh, name. So there's a little app out there called uh, SF Symbols. So the San Francisco font from Apple, it's got a load of symbols in there which became really nice and handy to use um, in here. So, I mean, there's there's a bunch. I mean, they use them in their own OS, so they surfaced them and made them really easy to use yourself. So that's where those came from. Um, and now that we've got that UI, um, we're gonna add one more thing in here. Anybody in here done iOS development before of any kind? One, two, three, four. Packages, how do you load in packages? Typically, what do you use? External packages. Cocoa pods. Cocoa pods. Cocoa pods. Yep. <laughs> Check this shit out. <laughs> this is cool. This made me really happy. Um, so there's this package out there uh, called Focus Entity. I believe this is it. Um, yeah. So 
down here. This is a standard. Now, so what we're going to add here, if you can see this well enough, is um, a recognition, a surface recognition, a, a surface plane recognition, showing you like what is actually being detected on your planes, so you have a bit more understanding of what your camera is seeing. Um, so by default, this this doesn't exist. So they made this. Somebody made this nice package out here, and now we've got Swift Package Manager, which just takes a GitHub URL. I'm sure they got several other endpoints that they work with, but uh, we simply now go file Swift packages, add Swift dependency, paste in that URL. And you now get, hey, do you want this version? What branch do you want? Next. Um, yeah, how much better is that than freaking Ruby Cocoa Pods? <laughs> oh. Okay. So we've added that package in there now. Uh, I'm just going to go follow their instructions on here. They've got an example. Uh, so we've got that library loaded in, uh, but what we need to do um, is basically create our own class. So if we go back over to our content view here, we can see that we've got this um, this AR view. Where's our AR view? There we go. to give us some sort of indication of what is being detected plane-wise uh, with our application. So I'm just gonna create this file and the code that I'm about to paste in here was taken directly from the uh, focus entity uh, repository. Might have to fix a couple things here. One is importing the focus entity library. I think that's probably it, yeah. Uh, so basically it's just a bunch of configuration in here. We're telling it to like detect horizontal and vertical planes. Um, doing some tracking, you know, like if it wasn't able to detect things, do some logging. You get the idea. Um, so now up here, I believe we need to find our instances of AR view and start changing that to um, uh, focus AR view. Um, and this will just magically uh, make our stuff start to work. So here. I think that might be it. We're going to go ahead and run it and see if we get that nice yellow indicator. Oh, oh yep, there 
surfaces. So uh, might be kind of hard to see on some of these uh, surfaces here. So kind of here when I'm in between, coming off that edge there, see how it changes to the, I can't figure out what this is, and then the square closes itself when it figures it out, right? Um, so there it's detecting that um, horizontal plane there. When I get up on that table, it should <laughs> figure out that surface. Um, and if I point at wall, so this is largely brought to you by the LiDAR uh, sensor on here. Um, if you do this on a phone that doesn't have that uh, sensor on there, uh, it will work a lot on our floors, our flat surfaces. Uh, but when you start to get up to walls, it doesn't detect those for, for pretty much anything. I will do it if you've got a very clear delineation between your floor and, and wall. Uh, but that LiDAR makes all the difference in the world. Um, so that is that package. So this just gives us uh, an understanding of where we can place things. And of course, that is still there by default. And that's what we're going to work on next. So in the code here. And instead of just placing this box as is right now, like we did with that ship, we're just going to kind of comment that out and um, come down here and create a place box uh, method. And we're going to kind of recreate this. So instead of using that um, uh, specific box here, I think we're going to make our own. Uh, so uh, we're going to let, we're going to create a mesh, uh, oops, a mesh resource, and we're going to generate a box and give it a size. This is very similar, right, to what we were doing before, and we're going to create a material. And this one's a little bit weird. We're going to make an unlit material, and um, if we so reality kit naturally is doing lighting, right? So it's it's a lot more advanced with this lighting, um, but. <laughs> Um, when I was testing last night, I had this blue thing and, and it was super dark. I couldn't figure out what the deal was. Um, and I ended up, um, just creating a white image. It just kind of showed up a lot better. Like, oh, where are you at? Um, uh, so our background here, yeah, that'll do, whatever. Um, we're going to grab this because it just renders quite a bit better uh, this way. And we're going to do the same thing over here and come and drop it in our image assets. Delete that old one. Call it devs as well. Drop it there. Let that access. Oops. Um, so this unlit material now um, got a little bit of weird setup here. So we are going to fixture resource load devs. And if that worked, we're going to then, oh, yeah, material, material. Uh, we're going to set a similar, like we did in that last project, we're going to set our base color um, to a texture of that texture resource. And we won't worry about that tent color. I had some other stuff in there. Um, so there's that. We need to keep moving a little bit here. Um, we're going to create a model entity. And we're going to then apply the mesh and materials or mesh. Materials is an array. We'll just pass in that one material that we have there. And I'll explain what some of this is here in a moment. Um, acre entity. And here we tell it what kind of 
planes it can use. So again, we have this horizontal and we have our vertical planes. We're going to tell it, yeah, use any plane, doesn't matter. Um, and then we're going to take our anchor entity and add our model to that. And then our AR view. Oops. Uh, I rename. All right, hang on a second. Uh, oh, yeah, probably need to. Yeah, sorry. Um, we've got this AR view locally defined here, um, and then what I'm gonna do is just come up and scope it so we've got more availability to it. Ah, uh, okay. No more with that laptop. Yeah. Yeah, sometimes just the old run again, right? I didn't, I didn't change anything. I don't know what that error was, sorry. Um, so now, and we commented out that just like what it recognizes as plain, don't do that anymore, right? And so now we've got this, I, on that Swift UI piece, I said run that place, place box function. So we've got this here, I'm gonna tap that button. And so now we've got that cube with that image mesh applied to it. Um, and what's cool about this is um, instead of just placing itself once, right, I can, I can place them and place them all I want, right? Um, and I also told it that it could, instead of just placing it on horizontal planes, I also said any, so I should be able to also place them on vertical planes as well. So I can just come in here and place them all I want. But uh, the one thing I want to do here is make these things movable. So like if you're thinking, you know, furniture app, you know, whatever um, kind of thing, want to want to move these things around. And this is another spot where Reality Kit is mostly pretty cool uh, because it makes it really easy to mostly do this. And I say mostly because there's just some weird caveats um, and then I'll show you here in a second. So if we go back down to our place box, um, I'm going to do a model entity dot generate collision shapes and base, basically going to tell this thing like if something is detected like like gesture wise make this thing respond to like collisions that are happening with it I know that's a little weird but it's effectively what's going on here um, and then the only other thing I'm going to add is an AR view 
<clears throat> and this is just a one-liner, um, which is install gestures um, for this model entity. Um, you can limit it. Um, so if we go back and look at this, um, this install gestures, um, oops, um, you can actually then pass in like an array of rotation, scale, and transform. Uh, but by default, or you can just say all, um, by default it just does all of them. But if you just wanted to do a pinch and scale and you didn't want to be able to rotate or anything like that, um, you, can, you can limit it. So, we don't get that silly air again. Um, Here's our surface, and I'm going to place it, but now I should actually be able to move this thing around, um, enlarge it, rotate it, um, and even when you get really big, it's a little weird, but it still tracks pretty well. So like if I come up to a uh, vertical surface here and place these at these you know, interesting angles, it keeps that tracking on there and it stays on that damn surface, uh, which is just wild, right? Like it's just, nuts that it does this. Um, so, kind of get the idea. Um, one, one reason that I say like it's mostly pretty good is you'll notice we had that cube we were working with earlier, that box, um, and then I went and made my own. And it's, it, you just get into these weird things when you're using some of the niceties in there. Um, when you use that scene file, that, that or the uh, reality file, and you load that in, the gesture supports like don't work very, very well on there. What you have to end up doing is take that entity and wrap it in another entity that you can apply that gesture support for, uh, because you, there's just no real way to define the collisions on those reality file items. What you have to do is, like I said, either take that and wrap it in another entity, or you have to go in and like dive into that file and rip out um, that model in there and then put it in something. So you get these niceties and there's also limitations on them. Um, and even when you do wrap that up in an entity that you define the gesture support for, I ran into this bizarre issue where it only wants to run gestures on vertical planes. I couldn't figure out like why it wouldn't do it on the horizontal plane, so I'm probably missing something, but who knows. Um, Time-wise, we are super late. Um, so I'm just going to kind of wrap it up. The last thing that I had, um, and I'm happy if anybody wants to hang around and, and see it, like I can hang around for a little bit longer, I was going to just do some uh, facial recognition um, and, and show you that. I'm just going to like append something that tracks on a face so it stays there. But there is enough like APIs in, in reality kit to actually detect face movement. So like it straight up defines like left eye, right eye, eyebrow, mouth, and you can then map those like movements to pieces of a 3D model. So that's how like your Snapchats and stuff, right? When like when you open them, your mouth and, and blink, that's how it, it does that. And so there's, I mean, relatively easy access to really advanced functionality. Uh, but what I was gonna do is just simply append, here's a face, there's a thing there now, uh, a little speech bubble type thing. Um, but otherwise, we're late and add you know, our technical difficulties, um, so I'm just gonna kind of wrap it up. I'll be hanging out, but uh, otherwise, thanks for sitting through this, and I really hope to see you guys back next month. So. And if there's any questions too, um, feel free, yeah. 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 What's that little dark circle that was always? I think around? that's like, I think it's, um, man, I thought at first it was like an accessibility thing, like pointer, um, but, but I don't know. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Let's see if it's always, no. So it's still there, it's still on my screen. Oh. Uh, so it's something with, oh, duh, it's my damn trackpad. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, sorry. I hardly noticed it. I noticed it last night. I was like, what, what is that? <laughs> Any questions? When, when you were doing this, did you just, uh, I mean, is it pretty easy to find the documentation? Relatively, yeah. And there's, I mean, there's, there's quite a bit of content out there. Uh, YouTube. Um, the documentation is a little bit tough simply because it kind of expects a certain level of understanding, right? So I'm in there and it's like, oh yeah, just do a uh, scene vector. And I'm like, I don't, I don't know what the hell. 
Um, so it's nice to watch somebody, you know, like on YouTube, kind of explain what some of those are a lot better than I could. Um, but otherwise, yeah, I mean, Apple's documentation is generally pretty good. Um, so, yeah. Tons of YouTube resources, though. Yeah. No? Cool. Hang out for a bit. This poor little laptop, huh? Or it's the, the, the HDMI thing. So, right before I started, the Elgato like, went to sleep. And I remember it kind of being on the fritz. So I was like, eh, and swapped to that. But Maybe the, the year of non use made it give up on life. Oh, they closed up on Korea. Uh, could we put a little extra on? Yeah. You're talking about that like, weird syntax with the buttons. Craig, I don't know if you can see me still, but uh, we're about to log off. Uh, thanks, for, thanks for hanging in there. Yeah. So in Swift, when uh, you call a method of creating class, if the last argument is a callback, you can put the callback after the.